Hello and welcome to On the Sunny Side. I'm Sunny Grenneveld, I'm an entrepreneur, and here on F15, I speak every week with people who are shaping the digital economy. Now, this week's guest I've known for over 10 years, Tobias Reichmut. He's a serial entrepreneur, he's an investor, and today I have him here to speak about his most recent company, uh, where he's a founding partner, Maximon. So welcome to the show, Tobias, so good to have you. Oh, my pleasure. Hello, Sunny. Hi. So uh, for those who tune in regularly, I always start with something called Sunny's Fast Five, five quick questions. Are you ready for that? <laughs> I'm ready for it, yeah. All right. So are you a morning or a night person? Morning person. Morning person. Um, if I give you a time machine, where would you go to past or future as possible? <laughs> well, uh... To the past, I would not go so far. I would go to 1905, because I think this was the exciting times where you know, you know, the first flying machines were there, the first cars were there. Uh, society really had a, a very fast-paced, uh, you know, sequence of of events and novelties. But I definitely would also fly to the future. You know, uh, 2150. Uh, see where we are in space exploration, see whether we were able to tackle climate change, and see whether I myself will be still living by then. Hmm, that brings us to our topic, but before we get into it, what does success mean to you? Success probably means to me that I can do what I have fun with, whether it's in business or private. Now, let's speak a little bit about Maximum. You said before um, you want to find out if you had a time machine, whether you'd be living forever. Now, Maximum is a company focused on longevity. And I find it phenomenal uh, just having known you for 10 years. You started out building a company in the sustainable investment space. Then you went on to start a company within the crypto space. Um, I think along the way, you also started a fund that's focused on exponential technologies. And now just this week, you launched Maximon. Can you tell me uh, what motivates you to keep on building companies and what does Maximon do? Uh, yeah, with pleasure. I mean, uh, I think my personal motivation is really that I'm more a founder um, and entrepreneur than I'm a manager. Uh, so all the companies you have managed, they uh, still exist and, and they do very well. Um, uh, but for example, with the first company, Susie Partners, I handed over after 10 years uh, the operational management to managers yeah, and, and they do a good job. Um, and the other two, uh, Crypto Finance Group and the Singularity Group, I co-founded, I helped building the company. But from the beginning on, I, I was in a, a board position. Uh, um, uh, so it was uh, Jan and Evelyn, the two CEOs who built the company. Um, and for me now with Maximon, I'm, I'm back in the driving seat. Um, I'm, I'm building the company together uh, with three colleagues. Um, so I, I'm not alone here. Um, and what is the motivation? Uh, it's really learning about innovation. What is possible? You know, the, 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 the frontiers of science, you can say. Yeah. So 12 years ago, when I founded Susie, I wanted to fight climate change. And it was very exciting. You know, it was starting this movement but then. Um, Crypto finance, we started in 2016. So one year before the big explosion of Bitcoin prices, uh, also as a little bit ahead of the curve. Um, and I believe now with the topic of longevity, we are again at the point where it's not that it's absolute novel, yeah, but it's early. And the topic of longevity has now uh, reached, I would say business uh, and it has reached society, but in, in, in very early stages. So. What is longevity? Longevity is the science of extending the health span and potentially also the lifespan. So uh, reaching a old life, but in a healthy shape yeah, that you can, you will be active when you're 100. You will be in the body of a maybe 40 year old then or so. That will be the goal. You should be happy. Uh, it will have a lot of implications, as you can imagine. I mean, our pension system <laughs> will be more than challenged. Uh, but I also think that uh, you don't want to go to pension when you're 75 uh, or something like this and you're still active. Yeah? So we talk about lifelong learning. Uh, we talk about new forms of society. Yeah? Uh, also, social regimes such as marriage will be highly challenged because if you marry with 30 and you have another 90 years to live together with your partner, uh, I hope you can, but it is definitely a challenge. 
so a, a lot of impact to almost every region uh, and every industry uh, we have here. And I'm super excited to work on that. Uh, so science shows us now uh, great advancements here. Um, you can extend the lifespan today, not only of animals, but also of humans. This has been shown. Uh, you cannot live forever yet. Uh, we are not there. And I do not qualify whether I think it's good or not. But uh, what I say is it's inevitable that it happens. Uh, science is not stopped, never. Uh, and so for, for me, it's, it's a, a very exciting field to be in. Um, with Maximum, we are a company builder. We start companies. We build startups. Um, so I, I can do what I like, building companies, basically, uh, surrounded by super smart people from science and business. Uh, and that's why I'm doing it. Yeah. When it comes to the uh, location, I mean, you're based out of Switzerland, out of, out of Zurich specifically. Uh, and this is really, I think, very much a hub also that's quite known for our research and development. Um, yeah. We have a very strong pharmaceutical cluster here uh, in Basel. Uh, it's, it's, it's a lot of insight, uh, particularly around the science, I'd imagine, is, is rooted here in, here in, in the city and, and in this country. How do you use this location advantage of building Maximum? Well, you said it all. I mean, we have already a lot of companies in the field of bioscience, pharma, and so on. We have great universities. And what I think is sometimes a bit sad is that a lot of entrepreneurial-minded people graduating from those universities, they leave the country. Uh, they, they go to the United States or they go to Singapore or wherever. And I think we should use uh, the potential we have here and be active in the company building space and startup. And so what I'm proposing here is nothing less than a longevity valley Switzerland, uh, similar to what we have built over the last years with the Crypto Valley, which has started in Zug as well. So no coincidence that uh, Maximon is headquartered in Zug again. Um, and yes, uh, I see ourselves as the, 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 the spare head here of building a longevity valley in Switzerland. How do entrepreneurs get to work with you specifically? Like, can anybody just come up um, after seeing this or how do you vet them and, and how do you pick these uh, the, the first few uh, companies that you're going to build out of Maxima? Yeah, there is two ways. Um, right now we are building the first two companies based on our own ideas and, and we select people to form a team. Uh, we are in the midst of, of the selection process. We have a lot of great applications already. Uh, one is a supplement company. So what supplements do you, Sonny, have to take to reach longevity? Um, this is highly individual. Right now in the market, you have a lot of supplements available, but to be honest, it's difficult to say what you should take, what quantities, and maybe you take something different than I have to take, you know, male different from female. We have different ages. We have different block groups. We have, groups, we have different DNAs and proteins. And so all this we look at. So it's basically our aim is here to have... Uh, basically individualized and tailor-made uh, supplement solutions for everybody. That's one company. The other one uh, is called Longevity U. Uh, it's a platform where we take people uh, at the hand and, and make sure that you reach your personal goal of longevity. Uh, we also are interested in gathering a lot of data there, uh, which comes back to the first one based on this data. Then in a the second stage, we can provide everybody with uh, individualized uh, treatment for longevity. And for those two companies, we accept applications. Uh, so we are, uh, you know, working with LinkedIn and all the other sites. But then there is also, and that's the second possibility, uh, the second way that people come to us and say, hey, I have a great business idea, um, but I need a platform. I need somebody to build this business with. And this can be somebody with a bioscience background who says, hey, we, we discovered a new enzyme or whatever, enzyme, whatever it is. Uh, can you help us build the company around that? And uh, so already now we get uh, interest in business plans. Um, you have to be selective, of course. You cannot do everything. Uh, but we believe that uh, over the time, uh, we will also see a lot of very good outside ideas uh, coming to us. And we built this together with the entrepreneurs then. So you mentioned before that you're also collecting data. Um, on the sunny side, I try to understand more about the digital economy and the frontiers of the digital economy. Um, how do you see the, the whole digital health um, trend and uh, play into it, particularly also, it's, I think it's been accelerated with COVID. How does that play into, into Maximum, if at all? Yeah, I think there's two sides. One side is everything from data gathering, 
on a personal level with variables, for example, you know, either you, you have a ring which uh, transports your sleep data, your um, whatever heart rate, uh, um, blood sugar, and so on, or you have a, you know, a Fitbit thing uh, around your arm. And this allows us to gather a lot of data in, in real time. And based on this, then we can give you a much better advice on what you should do, you know, high intensity training, um, when should you eat, um, uh, you should whatever, sleep more, have power naps, uh, fasting, uh, intermittent fasting, and so on. On the other side then, and there we come to um, the, uh, let's say the artificial intelligence and big data component, these, da these data are um, anonymized and then can be analyzed. And based on this, then we will be able not now, but in some years from now, hopefully, uh, to really give very clear predictions of what you, Sonny, based on who you are, on your blood group, your age, and so on, should take. Yeah? So uh, I think, yeah, the, the digital uh, uh, economy here helps a great deal uh, to move fast forward on, on longevity research and longevity impl uh, implementation. Closing question, do you think we'll ever be living forever? Scientifically, probably yes. Uh, I think this is possible. Yeah. Question is, do you want to live forever? Um, well, I, I had this discussion with my parents, um, and I think very, one very important point came out there. Uh, if you are in a perfect shape, nothing hurts, your eyesight is good, yeah? you still can run around. You are in every aspect in your body a young person. I don't think that many people say, oh, I'm 80, I want to die now. Yeah. Question is, will they still say the same when they're 120, when 140 or so? Yeah. So uh, as a society, we, we will, well, we, we walk into uh, new frontiers here and these frontiers are pushed out a lot and we probably don't know yet how to deal with that. Yeah? Um, I don't have a, an answer of how it will be. The only thing what I can say, as I said at the beginning, um, Science and research will not stop. Uh, it will not be the case that we say, okay, now we have reached 100, we are fine. Uh, there will be the next push, uh, genetic alterations and so on. And so I would say somebody who is alive today in good shape, 40 years old, has a very fair chance to reach 120 because there is exponential developments. Yeah? And the baby who is born today, I'm not so sure whether this baby cannot basically live indefinitely in theory. Uh, how this will work then in the future, it's a different question. But maybe one important fact here, people often say, oh, wow, but you know, uh, how should our social systems work with the health insurances um, and pension funds and so on? Two answers. A, as I said before, if you're healthy in the body of a 30-year-old, 40-year-old when you're 80, you definitely don't want to stop working. And you want to be active. You cannot just say, oh, I do nothing and wait for the next 40 years. Yeah? So you don't need the full pension there. I would rather say that you will need a, you know, a sabbatical now and then. Maybe every 10 years, every citizen has to write for a one year sabbatical and paid education because maybe not the full, uh, the whole eight years of your working life, you want to be an investment bank. Maybe you say, hey, you know what? I become a gardener now or uh, a writer or whatever. Yeah? The other aspect, um, health insurance costs will dramatically go back if we understand aging as something, something which can be treated. Yeah? Because if we are able to treat aging, most of those sicknesses which cost a lot of money in the last months of our lives, Alzheimer, cancer in all forms, and so on, will just not occur. Because if your body is young, your cells are young, uh, the cell division will not lead to cancer, not in, not in the amount as you have it now when you're 80 plus or so. So with this, I also think that health insurances will benefit uh, of, of the uh, longevity coming up here. Wow, well, thank you so much, Tobias, for this mind-boggling answer and future vision. I have had a, such a pleasure uh, listening to you and talking to you, and I'm very excited to see what's uh, to come for Maximon and also for Longevity Valley and well, frankly, for myself. Well, let's see how long, how long I last on this world. In any case, thank you so much. It's been a real pleasure and all the best. Thank you very much, Sonny, and uh, hope to see you soon and also in 50 years again. <laughs> <laughs>
So here on the sunny side, we continue every week with a mind-boggling conversation like this one, exploring the digital economy and the frontiers of new technologies. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do subscribe so you don't miss future episodes. And I look forward to seeing you very soon again on the sunny side.